Some of you think that the biggest challenge being up here is how one manages to stay awake or how we answer the calls of nature. Well, that will remain a trade secret. Actually, what I find most challenging is having the desire to participate but not being able to do so in a way that all of you do. So what you all have is a unique, precious privilege to make a significant impact on the well-being of our people. And I want to start by commending all of you for actively doing just that in the past few weeks. I'd like to thank my deputy speakers, Charles Chong and Lin Biao Chuan, for sharing the responsibilities of this chair. Thanks also to my clerks and parliament colleagues who quietly helped to keep the process running smoothly during this budget and CUS. I'd like to especially recognize our simultaneous interpreters who sit from 10 a.m. to 8 p.m. each day. And on this topic of language, some of you have spoken about the importance, and Mr. Yi Chia Singh did raise some questions. Uh, set up box in Mandarin is Ji Ding, Ji Ding He, and then analog TV is Lei Bi Dian Shi. And then, of course, we remember Senior Minister of State Chi Hong Tat, who spoiled market, I'm sorry, he, who raised the bar by speaking in Tamil not once, but twice. So the arms race has begun. Itu oru pala moli. Naa dalu mandram. Analum Tamil il pesa modium. This is a multilingual parliament. I can also speak in Tamil. <laughs> and of course, thank you so very much to all our civil servants and of course to our leader and whip. As I mentioned earlier, as speaker, I don't speak. So I have no choice but to listen. And there's been a lot of listening in these past few weeks. As leader mentioned, 530 cuts, more precisely 51 hours and 50 minutes allocated. And these are the second highest and highest, respectively, in the recent five years. So rather than repeat what the government has said, perhaps from this vantage point, allow me to try and see the wood for the trees. Firstly, what is our purpose? I discern four core reasons from everything that you have said. It's really about how we look after and make things better for Singaporeans as individuals. For Singapore, the community and society. And also there's a time dimension of meeting today's needs while catering for future ones. All four are clearly important. As we say, they are same, same, but also different, isn't it? There are trade-offs and choices on the very reasons for our existence. Secondly, what is a budget and COS process for? It is to discuss how we intend to realize our ideals, our aspirations via plans and details. The need to be pragmatic is as important as the ideals we hold dear. Mr. Murali Pillay shared with us Joe Biden's quote, and I think it's worth repeating, and I quote, don't tell me what you value, show me your budget and I'll tell you what you value. Closer to home, in 1971, as Rajaratnam shared, and I quote, what you have done may not get as much publicity as the utterances of professional oppositionists, but long after these have gone, what you have done will strengthen the democracy of deeds and not words. I know that in today's world, we sometimes like the smart sound bites the eloquent, emotive rhetoric. It helps, it is important. But substance and details matter as well. Especially in the real VUCA world, as Mr. Sia Kenping shared, volatile, uncertain, complex, ambiguous. Difficult, unpopular choices need sometimes to be made. We all grapple, don't we, with these dilemmas in our daily lives as individuals, in our families, at school, at work, as leaders. It is no different at a national level. But remember this, it is not about fear. It is about how we thrive in this environment and embrace and seize the opportunities before us. Thirdly, are we clear and united in where we are going? At times, things seem to be rather ambiguous, such as whether Two-thirds plus one-third is greater than one. I think we are, some of us are still scratching our head about that one. 
or disagreement, for example, having a division for the budget statement. But when we look past the differences, which are often amplified, do we not see that we actually have more points of convergence and agreement than not? These differences of opinions are important, and the debate helps us refine and clarify. Argue, fight by all means, but within limits and in a responsible manner. But I'm thankful that despite it all, we do have a unity of thought and conviction as to where we should go and how we should position ourselves as a nation. So long as we do not hold ourselves back and be mired as others do, we can boldly move forward into the brave new world. Others have noticed this. I recently listened to a BBC interview where a commentator was amazed that a government was able to plan for a tax increase in four years' time. He noted that we were able to take medium to long-term decisions in a way which governments in the UK and America are not able to do because they are always worried about the next election. While we should always be circumspect about comments and observations, I think these comments are worth pondering over. I believe that we are only able to think long term when in our society there is a sense of we and not just me. And where there's a belief in tomorrow and not just a focus on today. So lastly, how do we realise our vision? You know, we are laying the foundations for our future. We need to build a vibrant and innovative economy. We intend to build a smart, green, livable city. We want to foster a caring and cohesive society, and we have to ensure a fiscally sustainable and secure future for all of us. Perhaps the question to ask is, who makes this happen? We do. It is us, the people. What will make us great as a nation and to realise our vision will be when we are a people who will go that extra mile. When we go the extra mile for each other because it's not just about me. When we are able to look beyond self. So this is really about the heart and soul of our nation. And deep down inside all of us, I believe we know that these are fundamentally important. But unlike everything else in the budget, these cannot be mandated by law, but they can be nurtured. And it is for us as Singaporeans to respond. I recently met a father of a chronically ill child at a Club Rainbow event. He shared that as a result of his child's illness, he has learned to be more patient, to be more loving and caring. And he might have been quite different if circumstances turned out differently. And he said that in some ways, it is a blessing. When I speak to volunteers at the hospices, caring for those who do not have long to live, I realize that many of them learn to live their lives today differently. You see, change happens when we reach out and care for others. How else do we nurture this sense of looking beyond self? St. Francis says that it is in giving that we receive. Many faiths share the same idea. SG Cares is about how we nurture an environment where we reach out and care for others, and in the process, how we can perhaps begin to change, and how we can begin to become a better people and a better society. Our future is tremendously exciting. When we as Singaporeans take the step forward to care for others, when SG cares, we begin to build the bonds that bind. And these bonds enable us to go that extra mile for one another. And you know what? Whatever the future throws at us, we know we will fight for our survival and figure a way out. Because there's something larger than us that we're fighting for. These are the same qualities that will allow us to say the first line of our pledge with conviction. We the citizens of Singapore. These are the qualities that will also enable us to pledge ourselves as one united people 
so as to achieve happiness, prosperity, and progress for our nation.